not knowing exactly what the next show should be, mm -hmm. will be, what has the best chance of being fun and working. Conan did us all the favor of letting us know, I don't know what's happening next. So it's kind of given us, you know, permission to go out and see what's happening out in the world. What's up, everyone? Tanya here with popculture.com, and I'm so excited to welcome one of my absolute favorites. He's a TV icon, comedy legend, and star of the new Audible original recording, The Incredibly Inaccurate Biography of Andy Richter. Mr. Andy Richter is here. Andy, thank you so much for your time today. Hi, Tanya. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Good. You know, I'm so honored to chat with you, but before we get to it, it's been a little while since we last spoke, so a little wellness check. How have you been doing? Uh, wellness check. I'm fine. I'm, um, uh, you know, I mean, I just had it. It was just, I went through a weird period with the Conan show, uh, coming to an end, uh, or at least, you know, this iteration of it, um, which is still is not real. And I still have not really kind of, <laughs> you know, done the emotional work to know, to make that actual. Um, I still kind of feel like I'm on vacation, which I just, was texting a friend that you know you don't get to say you're on vacation if you don't have a job like you have to have a job in order to say you're on vacation so mm -hmm. i have to get past that soon um but i'm i'm fine i'm having a nice summer and uh you know hanging out with my kids and my dog and yeah. and doing projects like this yeah i was gonna get back to it like i was gonna get to it later but i do well i will ask them now like you know this whole thing with conan that you guys have ended it like it's, it's sunk in a little bit for you, but like, what's the fan reception been like? Cause I'm sure like you've been hearing a lot from fans in the last few weeks and now oh, for I, <laughs> it's, it's been really, yeah. uh, really wonderful. I mean, uh, you know, like it's ridiculous in a way it's to just, I just don't <laughs> like people aren't, aren't made to hear so much nice stuff about themselves. Yeah. And when something like that happens and it is wonderful, it is wonderful to hear all this stuff, but it is also like, oh, oh. my God, <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I, I'm really, I'm really happy that the stuff that we did meant a lot to a lot of people and especially to a lot of people who are like we were when we were younger and, and looking for shows that kind of were strange and, uh, you know, f like Bill Hader was on the show and put it perfectly. He said, Conan, he used to watch VHS recordings of it at a friend's house. And he said it was the first show that was his, the first show that his parents did not get and mm -hmm. probably didn't like, you know. Um, and that's pretty great, you mm -hmm. know, to, to affect somebody who does such good work as him with the work that we were doing back then. Mm -hmm. So are we going to see you on the new show with Conan on HBO Max or is that still I, near? I honestly have no idea and there's no deception. There's no sort of like we're all, you know, mm -hmm. there's a conspiracy to hide the truth. <laughs> right. um, there's a there's a difference of opinion. And I and kind of like I don't just not knowing exactly what the next show should be, mm -hmm. will be, what has the best chance of being fun and working. Mm -hmm. um and conan did us all the favor of letting us know i don't know what's happening next so it's kind of given us a, you know permission to go out and see what's happening out in the world the other employment yeah um and and i don't know i mean it all depends on what that show is and yeah. you know if, if it makes sense for me to do it if uh you know by then my uh you know my line of celebrity chili might have really hit the hit the shelves and then I won't right. need him anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the new thing you got going on because I'm so excited for it. I loved it. It's so funny. It's so different. Um, it's not your Oh, you got to hear it. I, 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 haven't, it. I haven't gotten to hear it yet. Oh, well, I mean, I, I guess I could have if I really pushed, but I've been kind of busy. But well, yeah. that's great. You liked it. I loved it. I think well, it is great. so funny. I was laughing out loud and it's not your typical biography. It's full of lies, misinformation. Yes, it's not living. really a biography. It's, it's kind of yeah yeah and there's like slander in it too so um yeah. <laughs> i'm wondering what how do you like tell like what do you tell readers to like at least and listeners in this aspect because it's on audible what do you tell them like what should they be expecting from this whole <laughs> biography um well i mean it's a, it's a funny it's a different concept a guy named joel cohen who writes for the simpsons came mm -hmm. to me 
and said, uh, I have an idea for, a, for biographies that are written by different people, like a chapter, a writer, mm -hmm. uh, comedy writers, and it would be a biography of, of a willing subject who would be in the project too, but all the stuff is BS. It's yeah. all lies and kind of like, you know, it's, it's making, it's a roast basically, a, mm -hmm. you know, a chapter by chapter <laughs> roast yeah. of a subject. And the subject gets to interject within the story or between chapters mm -hmm. and refute these things. Yeah. And I was like, that sounds pretty good. And he wanted to do it. He's ideas, his ideas to do it as a series called mm -hmm. and call it a liography. <laughs> right. Uh, and I said, that sounds great. So we put our heads together and got a bunch of different, really funny people to do this. We sold it as an audible original, um, which is the word for audio book that I have to use under <laughs> threat of punishment. <laughs> right. um, but uh we sold it as that we recorded it and i you know like i say i haven't heard it but it's crazy funny i mean that's really all that mm -hmm. i want people to expect out of it it's just something that'll kill a few drives to work and make you laugh a little bit you know mm -hmm. and are there any remote truths hiding between the lies because i feel like we touch on surface things where it's like you going to conan and then you yeah yeah so i know your mom obviously did not explode giving birth to you so <laughs> right so like what like where is the lie where's the truth and like how much do you know to give to the audience in order to make it like funny and like how did you figure out that process well we they just kind you know we just kind of divvied up my life mm -hmm. into chunks that mm -hmm. sort of seemed like just that would would be a good framework for a bit mm -hmm. you know for like to make fun of me in high school and then to make fun of me in college and then to make fun of you know just the different steps of my life when to make fun of me mm -hmm. and and then we pretty much left it up to the writers and they you know I don't even I don't even remember if we sent out like actual sort of information about me I think we just said <laughs> go go write the part where I start on Conan and then just kind of <laughs> left it up to the writer to do uh -huh. it. um and I I I I I wish I knew who, I wish I had a list. I should have said, had a list of who wrote that, who wrote what, because I don't want to get it wrong, but that's yeah. a really funny chapter. You well, know? I will mention the writers are amazing. It's Joel Cohen, Andy Daly, Samantha Irby, and even Ken Jennings, which is so yes. interesting. And it's so fun. I had no idea what an eclectic mix you have there. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the thing I also love. Ken, so Ken's a friend of mine and I, and it, he was, but it wasn't my idea to have him do it. Uh -huh. It was actually a friend of Joel's, a writer mm -hmm. that Joel knows, recommended Ken and said Ken's and Ken was nervous about it but his chapter is one of the best funniest ones I think yeah I have yeah. to now like even listen more because I want to know which one is his because yeah, like yeah has such great voices in it yeah um you know what I love also is Nick Offerman is narrating and he adds such an incredible touch to these stories which are very funny so what made him the perfect voice for you um he said yes <laughs> okay <laughs> that's the that's the short answer yeah uh the uh, have time and can read answer is um well we, you know we ask when you get, have a job like this you put it out to lots and lots of people mm. and um and it's very rare that people go to the trouble to actually read it but i love nick and i think he loves me um <laughs> and he went to the he was kind of iffy about it just kind of in terms of schedule and then he read it and really liked it and said yeah I want to do it so that's like really special yeah uh that it I mean uh, we would have been lucky to have him anyway but the fact that he was drawn to it out of uh choice mm -hmm. you know rather than just all right I'll do it <laughs> Right. And you know, you're such a seasoned performer with credits in film and TV spanning more than two decades. And I was actually really surprised to learn this was like your first biography. So like, yeah. why would you want to go? Like, what, was, what was your reasoning for going in, you know, this whole genre this way as a liography, as opposed to an actual biography that people have, like, you know, like they just write like Michelle Obama's got a biography, but it's not like, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, well, Joel got around to it first uh, <laughs> and he didn't want to do a real one. Right. So, you know, and, you know, and that was the question that I was asked by, and you know, everyone from like my mom to my agents mm -hmm. was, do you want to do this in case you want to write some, you know, you want to write a real memoir or something later. Yeah. 
And I was like, what difference? <laughs> Nobody cares. It'll be fine. It's this is all just nonsense and and jokes and fun. And you know, yeah. it's not like if I do write, you know, huh. <laughs> my, you know, my life and times. Mm -hmm. Uh if I do write something like that, it doesn't, it won't, yeah, it won't have anything to do with this. I feel like we get glimpses of glimpses of you through your podcast as well. So like, I feel like we do get to know you and we've seen you like throughout the years and also in interviews and your personality just kind of shines and everything. So I don't know if maybe we'll like, if you do ever do a memoir, I would love it. Cause I would like to. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think it'd be great. But yeah, uh, I, have to, I have to wait for a lot of people to die. So <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> yeah. like, I feel like why bother until you can really let loose? Yeah, and that's going to take that. that's going to take some some people, yep. unfortunately, or <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I do love how this audiobook does something that has never been done before. And this is not a major spoiler, but it covers your death like maybe twice. Yes. <laughs> Right? Yes, yes. I'm, and maybe three times. I'm not even sure. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, so, you know, taking this from the great James Lipton, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Oh, geez. Um. <laughs> Get in here. We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> right. I don't know. That would just be funny to me. It's yeah. like you're, there's, you go to heaven and they're still like, oh, sewer lines busted. <laughs> <laughs> it's like get on out there yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, was there a favorite chapter of yours from this book that you were just like i love this chapter more than this or is it oh no way am i no. no way am i stepping into that oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> we, <laughs> there's there's too many people whose work i love and admire on this project to do to like right. you know to throw a a, a a cat into that dog kennel uh, <laughs> yeah don't want to do it yeah well aside from this do we have anything more that we can expect from you in the coming months i know that you still have your podcast it's going strong and we have all the fans excited for new episodes yep okay. um yeah three questions um is my podcast and uh i am I i'm just developing things nothing that i could really you know say, say anything about because it's not real <laughs> I, it takes a long time before anything it's yeah. even worth it to talk about anything yeah. but i have you know i'm developing an animated show and there's a game show that i'm mm -hmm. connected to that's being pitched and uh, and i'm supposed to be writing a lot of stuff but i'm not <laughs> I, I should be but i'm not i will be you'll, you know? you'll get there yeah, time yeah. has become a looser i feel like we don't really know well and i mean it was just the fourth of july come on it's you know you can still smell barbecue sauce around the house. Of course. Well, Andy, Van Wilder, Richter, <laughs> thank you so <laughs> much for your time today. The incredibly inaccurate biography of Andy Richter is available July 8th only on Audible. For more with Andy and all your favorite stars, keep it locked to popculture.com for the absolute latest.